A warm welcome to all our viewers from across Africa as we welcome you to the largest mosque in Western Europe, Obey 242, where the National Peace Symposium of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community is going to take place today. Nearly a thousand people attend this unique event every year, including secretaries of state, ministers, ambassadors, journalists and academics, as well as representatives from numerous charities and faith communities. We live in a fragile world, a world that is rife with conflict and heightened tensions. As we desperately seek solutions that can bring lasting peace, the need for true justice becomes ever more apparent. And that is a the theme of this evening's event, the highlight of which will be the keynote address delivered by Hazrat Khalifatul Masih V, may Allah be his helper, the head of the worldwide Ahmadiyya Muslim community who will inshallah be gracing this evening's event with his presence. Amidst the backdrop of global political instability, religious intolerance and extremism, with an attack on Westminster recently case in point, the Ahmadiyya Muslim community has taken the lead in the promotion of interfaith dialogue. Tonight's event is another showcase of the true teachings and beauty of Islam. This is truly a much needed and unique event. And on behalf of the Ahmadiyya Muslim Community United Kingdom, we welcome you to the 14th National Peace Symposium 2017. It was very important because it came at the end of a week where we'd had a terrorist attack in London and I was as an MP in Parliament the day that it happened. And I think the chance for everybody to come together, not just for my local community, but for many across London, um, and to reflect on Islam as a peaceful religion was really important. In the UK, one of the things we've really focused on is making sure that we have British values as part of our schools. And these are values that many countries share, actually. Rule of law, equality, democracy. Um, and so we want to have those in our schools and, and in every single school. But we also are helping teachers to spot those students where they feel there's a problem with them and that they may be at risk of radicalisation. And again, the good news is that many teachers say that they now feel confident that they can work with students and, and help them when they see a risk. But there's a long way to go. And it is really important that in the end we build links between communities. And that's one of the strongest things we can do to make sure that young people growing up wherever they are, including in the UK, are less at risk of radicalisation. Right. Um, others believe that negative media framing of Islam has in a way isolated a lot of um, Muslims. And this has um, created a situation where they would want to engage in extremist activity. Um, is there a way you are going to educate the youth as Minister of um, Secretary of Education to ensure that there is less negative media framing of Islam? I think that we can work very effectively with mosques to make sure that true Islam um, is the one that young people learn about if that's their faith. And what's interesting is when you see some of the work done with young people who become radicalized and you, they're asked about whether what they know about Islam, actually they have a false impression of mm. this religion that is for them, they say, driving their actions. So the key is making sure that people really know <laughs> the faith that we're all talking about mm. and again the peace symposium is a fantastic opportunity every single year that we have here to bring communities together of all faiths not just uh, the muslim faith but, but different parts of our community and fundamentally we're a very mixed community mm. here in london and in the uk and we get on because people actually come together and we focus on mm. all the things that we have right. in common Religious extremism is creeping at a fast pace in, uh, at a fast pace in Africa, and this has been a major cause of concern. Um, to the African audience watching you, what advice would you want to give to African governments, especially, so uh, as to halt the rates of extremism on the continent? I, I think the most important thing is for governments to stand up to extremism of all forms and to make sure that. In, in their countries, people who want to live peacefully are able to do that and that there isn't persecution for people because of their religion, 
um, sexuality or, or any other aspect of the of them as a person. And I know that in the end, um, peace is often hard won, but it's hugely important for all countries, and especially if you want to have strong economies education systems in the end you have to have a stable country and that's why peace is also so important because I've always felt that every country's greatest asset is its people but people want to be able to get on with their lives and it's very hard for them to do that when they're in situations where there's conflict around them so I think a focus on what people have in common hmm. and their common values right. is a start. Right finally uh, to those who think that the British government hasn't done enough in the education sector to um educate religious minorities and uh, other groups, larger groups, on the need to live uh, peacefully with religious minorities. What message do you have for them? Because there is this strong thinking that minority religious groups have been excluded, especially Muslims. We have freedom of religion in the UK. In the end for us, it's our communities that are making sure that we have an inclusive society. Government is there to support that and help to make sure it happens, but actually nobody instructed any of the people in the room, the several hundred people in the room that were at the Peace Symposium tonight. I just met a lady who traveled all the way from a different part of our city to be here tonight because she thought it was important. That's what she told me and that's why I'm here too. So it's gonna be people in our country that build a strong Britain going forward. And, and I think I'm proud that my local Amadir community is giving us a reason and a way to come together. Thank you. When are we expecting in Africa? <laughs> I would love to come back to Africa. As Secretary of State for International Development, I spent a lot of time in many different countries of Africa and I made lots of fantastic friends and I had lots of wonderful experiences. And I also was really proud of the work that we did with a country like Sierra Leone combating Ebola. So I'd love to come back. I'd love to come back and see some of the education programs that we were working with many African countries on. And um, I don't know when, because I'm busy then, then here, I guess, but I hope I, I can I make it. I have to go back to the Secretary of State portfolio. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, we'll never know. <laughs> but, I, but I still feel that both of my roles in international development and education are about building people up for the future. Right. That's why they're so, so important. Thank you so Rosie, much. Thank you.